think I'd be bringing you anything else. <laughs> I did bring my friend back. Actually, you know my friend? He flew back. I'm not kidding you. I think he really thinks I'm kind of cool. Oh, see? He actually said that. Well, thank you. I appreciate those kind words. Oh, do I ride a motorcycle? Yes, I do. Oh, so that makes me cool then? All right, thank you. Hey, you know what? You can come back anytime you want, my friend. Yeah. Okay, here we are again. Another review video. This is number three. And this is chapter four review. Let's go ahead and get cracking. It says here that we're going to shade a model to show five tenths times three tenths. Then we're going to find the product. All right. I like these. These are a lot of fun. And I do have a special surprise. Wait till you see this. You're going to be like, Mr. Wara, you know, I always knew you were kind of magical, but you have just gone over the top now. Okay. First of all, when we solve this problem, we, we got to kind of keep in mind that remember this is the whole that equals one whole. Because we used to always think of these as being a hundred. I know I wrote right over my, okay. Okay. We can fix that. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so this is my one hole. That makes it a little bit easier when we think about this problem because we have tenths and we know that there's ten tenths, right? Ten tenths is equal to one hole. And here we have five tenths. So that's going to let us know that we're going to go ahead and shade in five columns. I'm going to go ahead and do that. Watch my magic. Dun, dun, dun. Look at there. Ooh, there's one tenth. There's two. There's three. I know. I count pretty nice, don't I? Here's four. Okay, we're cruising along. And finally, here is five. So I'm showing my five tenths with this pretty pink color. And for the most part, I shaded fairly well. What I need to do is I need to go ahead and show because I'm multiplying within this area. This really is an area model. I'll be multiplying three tenths. Now I'm going to show the three tenths. However, when I show the three tenths, I have these blue ones here, and these are going to represent my three tenths. But I'm going to crisscross them. And what's going to happen? Oh, yeah, huh? You like? Now, the beauty of this is you actually get to see the color that shaded in right inside that box. And inside, we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But those are 15 hundredths out of that whole. So 15 hundredths is written just like that. Isn't that cool? Yes. Time to move on. Now, since Mr. Evans is paid $9.20 per hour for the first 40 hours he works in a week. Now, he is paid one and a half times that rate for each hour after that. By the way, that's usually called time and a half. That's what we call that. Last week, Mr. Evans worked 42 and 25 hundreds hours, or 42.25. He says he earned $388.70 last week. Do you agree? Mm, support your answer. Okay, I love it. Ooh, I love the challenge of a new problem. Well, first things first, we want to make sure that we look at the problem and we want to try to unpack it, make sure that we understand what the problem is saying. It's this hourly rate is important. We need to know how much he makes per hour. As you can see, he makes $9.20 per hour. Now he makes that for the first 40 hours he works in a week. Now, when he goes beyond that 40 hours, he's paid one and 1.5 times that rate. First thing we definitely know is with the 1.5 times, that's going to be more than the $9.20 per hour. So what we need to figure out here are a couple of things. We need to first figure out what is the salary he makes with the $9.20 per hour for 40 hours a week. Let's go ahead and do that calculation. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my $9.20. I'm going to multiply that by, and I like to put my my 40 this way. You may recall, that way I can just drop that zero down. Now I have another zero, and now I have eight, and I have 36. I have two decimal places, we're talking about money, so I'm gonna have $368. So far, it could be true, couldn't it? Now if this number had exceeded the $388.70, 
maybe then we could right away say no. But so far, it could be. Now, it says that he actually worked 42.25 hours. So we need to actually multiply. We need a couple things here. We need to actually determine what is the hourly rate of 1.5 times. There's a lot of little different calculations we need to do. So let me go ahead and do that amount. $9.20. Now we're going to multiply that by 1.5. Now remember, all we're doing is, is we're just lining up the digits. We're not worried about the decimal point. Here we have 0, 10, carry the 145, looks like 46. Placeholder. That's right. And then we have 0. Then it looks like we have 2. And then we have 9. Okay. We're adding our partial products here. 0, 8, 13. And now I have three decimal points. One, two, three. So I have 13.8. Now that is going to be the new salary. Not too bad. Time and a half, huh? Gets $13.80. So let's take $13.80 then. And I'm going to multiply that with the 2.25 hours. Because that's the amount of time he worked beyond the 40 hours. So I'm going to go ahead and put 2.25. I'll put that decimal in there, but I'm lining up my digits. And then I'm going to multiply. And then that way it will determine. Now we have 0, 40, carry the 4. We have 15, that looks like 19, carry the 1. We have 5, and there's 6. Placeholder. OK, now we have 0. We have 16, carry that 1. Now we have 6, and that's 7. And then 2 times 1 is 2. Now this one's. Double placeholder. That's right, we have two because we're moving all the way over here. Now this is going to be zero. This is going to be 16. And we're going to carry the one, six, seven. Do you see a pattern there? Yeah. Now, we need to add all those partial products. We have zero, zero, 15. Carry the one, 13, 14. That's going to make 20. Carry the two, that's four. That's going to make 11. Now we have, wow, we have four, one, two, three, four. So we need an additional $31.05. Now what we need to do is we need to take our $368, okay, and we're going to add that with our $31.05. We add that together, we get five, zero. Remember the decimals? Bring it on straight on down. Okay, and then nine, nine, three. So I'm getting $399.05. So based on these numbers, I'm going to say, no, I do not agree. I do not agree because uh, Mr. Evans says that he earned the $388.70. Now I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put this into words. I think I, I spoke through this entire problem. As you can see, this was a, a very uh, multi-step problem. That's all my work. Okay, let's move on. Now let's explain how an estimate helps you to place a decimal point when multiplying 3.9 and 5.3. Yeah, I think that to answer this question, I think how an, uh, an estimate would help me is by just multiplying. Like when I do an estimate, I would say like 3.9 okay, is really about 4 and 5.3 is about 5. And that's going to equal 20. So an estimate of 20 would be reasonable for for the for for the the product in, of these two factors. So if I were to go ahead and multiply, what how it'll help me is when I multiply these, it'll help me put the decimal in the correct place. See if I multiply these through, and I get seven. Carry the two nine. That looks like eleven. Placeholder, and then I have forty-five, and then I have fifteen, so it's nineteen. You can see what happens here with my number. I end up with two thousand sixty-seven. That doesn't seem very reasonable if my estimate is saying 20. So where it was going to help me is remembering that. So that way I can put that in. So let me, I'm going to go ahead and put that into words into my box. So there you go. I think I answered that question. On Saturday, Ahmed walks his dog seven tenths of a mile. On the same day, Letitia walks her dog four tenths times as far as Ahmed walks his dog. How far? does Letitia walk her dog on Saturday? And what we can do here is a couple things. We can, since we've already learned, I think we just multiply these straight across. And we're going to end up with 8, carry the 2 for 28. That's going to be 0, leaving us with 2. Over here, this is just going to turn to 0. See this? Okay, so we really don't even need to put those down there. And now we just add, we get 28. 
And at 28, doesn't seem very reasonable. 28 miles doesn't seem reasonable. But then again here, we have two powers of 10 in here, two decimal places. So we need to move two decimal places over. Always good to put that zero in front. So we end up with 0 0.28 miles. And that would make sense with an S. All right, next page. For 19A through 19D, select true or false for each statement. The product of 1.5 and 2.8 is 4.2. So let's just go ahead and, and, and do this. 2.8, 1.5. And that's true based on my work. That is true. The product of 7.3 and 6 tenths is 43.8. And that is not true. In fact, if you look at this 7, this is less than 1. To get up that high 43, yeah. Not true. We end up with 4.38. Here the product of, here we have hundreds and tenths. What should our result be? Thousands. So that can't be true. All right. Nothing hurts going to do the problem. Put 0 0.09, uh, 0 0.7. We're going to have three decimal places though. We're going to have 63, carry the 6. That's going to be 0. That's all we have. Three decimal places. That one's way off. Way off. Okay, now here we have the product of 79 hundredths and 1.5. Well, how many decimal? We have three decimal places. Look like it's a good possibility anyway. Let's multiply through and see what we get. And we have 1.5. Okay, looks good to me. I like it. Okay, but we knew at least it had a chance because we had three decimal places. Here's just a builder buys 24.5 acres of land to develop a new community of homes and parks. Now the builder plans to use 25 hundredths of the land for a park. How many acres will he use for the park? And what we're doing here is we'll be asked basically to find 25 hundredths of the land for the park. And it's telling us right here that the 24.5 acres of land is located there. So we're going to want to take 25 hundredths and multiply it with 24.5. Okay, so I'm seeing 6.125 for part B. It says he buys a second property that has 62 hundreds times as many acres as the first property. How many acres of land are in the second property? Show your work. Well, this is a reminder that it had the number been at least one whole, we would have had the same amount. But since now we're talking 62 hundreds, that means that second property that he uh, acquired is going to be less than the 24.5. So we're going to take the 24.5 acres. This is our 62 hundredths time, so we'll put that in there. We have a decimal place, and then I'm just leaving those there so I can count them later. Line up the digits. Placeholder. Okay, and then we have 11. Now let's try 30, Mr. Ora. 30. 24. 7, carry the 2. We have 12. Plus 2 looks like 14. We're adding now. 0, 9, 11, carry the 1. It's kind of sloppy. 15190, I have three decimal places. So that's going to be 15. 15.190. 15 I have to ask myself if that answer is reasonable. Well, if I were to find half, think a half. Half is 0.5. Okay. So if the problem had actually said 0.5 or 0 0.50, which means the same thing, then that would have split it right in half about 12. And this is a little bit more than half and my answer is a little bit more than 12. So I like that. Yep, that's exactly that will work for me. So here um, if we can put this as a statement it would just be the the second property has 15 and 190 thousandths if you want to say it like that or or we could also say it like this or 15 and 19 hundredths acres of land in comparison. Okay, nice. We're cruising, my friends. Joaquin lives three-tenths of a mile from Keith. Layla lives four-tenths as far from Keith as Joaquin. How far does Layla live from Keith? Write an equation to solve. Okay, well, let's slow this problem down. First thing here, we have this distance. And sometimes, you know, drawing a picture works off the best. Let's just, let's just say this is Joaquin's house. Okay, it's a big circle. He's got a circle house. Okay, and then we have Keith, and Keith's over here. And they're saying that that distance there is three-tenths of a mile. And this is 
by the way, just distance. It says Leia lives four tenths as far from Keith as Joaquin. So whatever that distance is, which is three tenths, we know that already. She lives four tenths as far. And when we're saying that as far, so now we can take our three tenths and we can multiply it with four tenths. Easy enough, right? We end up with 12. Is that reasonable? No, we have two decimal places. So now we're going to end up with an answer as 12 hundredths miles. Okay, Brianna is getting materials for a chemistry experiment. Her teacher gives her a container that has 15 hundredths liter of a liquid in it. Brianna needs to use four tenths of this liquid for the experiment. How much liquid will Brianna use? Now this is an interesting one because here we have 15 hundredths liter and that's how much is in the container. Okay, so if you want to think of it like one liter, if you had just like one liter, this is not much, right? There's a lot less than that. It's only 15 hundredths of a liter. So, but she's going to use four tenths of that amount. So how much liquid there is, she's going to use four tenths of that liquid. We need to determine how much is that liquid going to be calculated when we look at it as a liter. All right. I don't know if any of that made sense to you. If I were to draw, like try to draw a bottle here and you know, you have your one liter mark, your 0.15 is way down here, right? It's not very much. And we're trying to find out how much is four tenths of that amount? See, five tenths would be half. What would be half? We're trying to find that. When we we're trying to find four tenths of, you guys know what we're talking about, right? We're talking about multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and put my, have all these extra dots here. <laughs> so here I have 20, carry the two, four, look like 60. But I have one, two, three decimal places. One, two, three. Oop, I have a little loop de loop right there. So I actually have 0 0.06. We put a zero in front. We can drop that zero off in the end. 0 0.06. Yes, my friends, it's the end of another video. Yeah, we complete chapter four. You guys are going to be ready for that test, right? Yeah. Now, live long and prosper.